What's up guys? As you can see, I've taken the wall accent concept that's been going around lately and applied it to just the fireplace area. Full credit to my wife for this great idea because some of the other ideas we had for this were extremely extensive and expensive and this looks probably better than what I could have came up with. This is what we were dealing with, but even prior to all the white paint here, our walls were an ugly yellow with brown accent walls. We then painted all of our walls white, and then the fireplace and some of the accent walls, this escape gray, although it's really slightly green. We're keeping things neutral, whites are coming back and accents are in, gray interiors are phasing out, white walls are always safe. Anyway, let's build this together in today's video. <sighs> This wall will be made out of one by three premium pine boards and I'll use this angle finder here so I know how to cut the tricky angles. I'll begin by removing all of the items on this wall including this TV that took some difficulty to put up and these old sconces that I'll replace with something a little more modern. <laughs> this TV has so many cables to it, it's crazy. Unfortunately, these sconces are directly in front of where I want my side boards to go, so I'll need to move the wires around for my new locations. To figure out my layout, I'll use this laser level to get my straight lines where I should measure for the left and right side. That will basically be my border for this whole project. My ceilings are about 18 feet high, if not more, so I'll use my extension ladder here. With the laser line in place, I'll trace the border every few feet so I can line up my wood frame later on with the line that I drew. And this will make it where I can move the laser over to the left side of the fireplace and start tracing that line too, without losing my place. With everything out of the way, I'm going to do a first coat of paint in the section where I'll be framing in wood. It's much easier to do this now than when all the wood is in the way. I'll start by cutting around all of the electrical boxes and then I'll cut towards the ceiling and around the fireplace mantle before I start ultimately rolling over it as a second coat. And I'm only going to do one coat right now because I haven't decided if I'm going to spray over this with paint or not. I want all of my pieces to fit tight, so I'm going to cut the sides first and install those, and then I can measure the slats after that. Now those two steps, the cutting and the sanding, is exactly what we're going to do with the inner slats, so when those come up later, I'm just going to fly through the video. Now I'll install the side pieces using the lines I drew and the laser level. It's time for the measuring part, which is the hard part. With the laser on the outside of where my trim piece will be, I'll find this angle at the ceiling using the angle tool. Then I'll measure my height on each side by dropping the tape measure down. These pieces will go from the ceiling to the mantle and all the slats will go in between. According to the tool, I'll need to start with a 30 degree cut here. So I'll trace along the tool to get an example line and then set my angle on the miter saw to 30 degrees as well. And then ultimately I'm cutting this from the height of the ceiling to the mantle. Now I'll begin sanding and I'm going to round out the edges just so it has a more premium look. If it gets too boxy then it looks too cheap. By the way I am sanding with 120 grit sandpaper. I'm probably not going to go back over it with 220 or anything finer just because it's not a delicate piece of furniture that needs to be super smooth. And then once all the sanding's done, I'm going to wipe it down with a wet rag so that way the paint will adhere to it a lot better later on. Now those two steps, the cutting and sanding, are exactly what we'll do with the inner slats, so I'll fly through that later on in this video. Now I'll install the side pieces, again using my lines I drew and a laser level. The best method I found was to shoot one nail at one end of the board and then use my level to make sure it was straight up and down. By just using one nail, it allows me to pivot the board as needed. It's that second nail that will fix this in place. The height on my tall side is 115 inches, so I'll need to use two pieces of wood because these are only 8 feet long. 
Luckily, hiding the seams is pretty easy. I made a 45 degree miter cut to join the two ends, so with a little wood filler later on and paint, you'll never see the seam. Again, I have my one nail up top on this piece, and then I'm going to level it while I could still pivot it, and then tack in the second nail, and then move on to adding the longer bottom board. I'll use wood glue to connect these two pieces to really hold these two tight so there will never be separation between the seam. I'm going to use this angle tool here again to find the angle of this weird spot in my ceiling and I'm going to cut this number in half and make an equal cut on each of my boards so that way my seam is shared between the two boards equally. With the border now installed, I'll start measuring the widths and get my slats cut. The goal is to get equal spacing for my slats. My tall side is 115 inches, so if I divide that by 8 slats, I get almost 14 inches. I'm using tape here so I can see how it will look visually before making any permanent moves. With the border now installed, I'll measure the distance in between and get to cutting. I'll just follow the same steps that I did for prepping my border pieces. I'll cut, sand, and then wipe clean. I drew a line every 14 inches or so, and I'll start lining up my slats, the bottom of my slats with those lines, and start nailing it up. As I said before, I'm gonna tack in one nail to one end, and then pivot or rotate my slat until it's level, and then tack in the rest of the nails. I am gonna fast frame the rest of this, but take note that I am applying wood glue to the ends of each of these boards as they connect to the frame, and that just helps them hold firm and prevent them from ever separating and creating seams in the future. I'm using two inch 18 gauge brad nails here with my Ryobi nail gun. Two inch is a little excessive for straight into drywall, but I'll be coming back and aiming for studs once I get all these up. You can see I have a couple of outlets in the way of the slat, so I'll trace around them and cut out with a jigsaw. I was sure to leave enough room for the outlet covers, but at the end of the day, the TV will be covering this entire section. Now I'm mounting my TV bracket so I know exactly where my TV will go. This is important because my TV will need to tilt down since it's up here on the fireplace, but tilting it down requires room behind the TV. Therefore, I'll need to cut some of these slats short. Additionally, the mount is directly in the way of a slat, so I'll need to cut these short too. I didn't show it here, but I hung the TV up temporarily so I can make the bottom slat pieces fit perfectly. I traced the curved line to fit the curved back of my TV, and it'll end up resting in here just right. Now I'll cut these out with the jigsaw just for an easy curved shape. With them cut, I'll then sand them, wipe them down, and get to installing. We aren't quite done yet. It's up and it looks good, but it's time to clean it up by filling in the nail holes and caulking up the seams. I'll be using wood filler for the nail holes. You can use spackle if you'd like as well, but we're going wood filler. The top of my wood filler was a bit dry, but as I got going, it became easier to apply and smeared into the holes and seams. By the way, this is a Minwax branded product, and no, they're not a sponsor, unfortunately, because I think I use them and talk about them all the time, but I do have links to all these products down in the description below. This was quite a tedious part of the project, so I'll just fly through this and spare you the boredom. All of the nail holes and the seams between the two boards now are all wood filled. So let's zoom in on that. You can see all my seams, all my nail holes are all covered up. So now I'm gonna come through and sand it. I understand the sanding is gonna leave dust everywhere, but I have the old trusty shot back there and we're gonna clean this thing up. 
Then once it's clean, I'm gonna vacuum off or at least wipe down the wood before applying the caulk so the caulk will really bond and then comes the paint. And you want the paint to really bond. I'm using 220 grit sandpaper on this step to get a fine finish on the face of my wood. The benefit of a smoother wall is that wiping off dust and spider webs through the years becomes easier. At least that's my logic. I got my painting shirt on and now it's time to caulk up these seams with some basic paintable caulk. First, we're gonna cut the hole with this. And then puncture it with this. There we go. The best part about caulking all of this is that you don't need to get it perfect. You just need to fill the edges and wipe the excess. Since I'll be painting everything one color, there's no need to tape off for straight lines or anything crazy like that. For the caulk, I'm using a standard baseboard caulk that is paintable. The important part is the paintable part. Not all caulks are like that. Another trick to help is to keep a wet rag with you. Dampen your finger before you wipe your finger down the bead of caulk. And this helps create a smoother finish and keeps your hands a little cleaner. A soapy wet rag is even better if you want to go all out. As an attempt to not be wasteful, I'm using some really old paper to protect my mantle before painting. I'll use my new good stuff for the ceiling and walls here in a bit. This is a little tricky to handle and it is quite thick, so I'll just tack it up with pieces of painter's tape before really making my straight lines around the fireplace border. All that's left now is to paint this thing, install the sconces, which just came in the mail this morning, and we are almost done with this thing. What a transformation. I originally painted the back wall behind the slats there because I was gonna hand paint this entire thing, but realized I might as well just paint it with the sprayer that I have because, I mean, I already have one. I was worried about taping off everything and all the work that comes with that, but hand painting takes, for one, a lot longer but also it's not as clean and perfect as a sprayer would be. And since this is the, like the flagship item in this house, this is the very first thing that you see when you walk through this hallway and in this living room, I want it to be very clean and pristine. I'm gonna paint this with the Graco paint sprayer. I have both the professional one and this little handheld one here. So we're gonna use the handheld one, put it on a fine paint spraying tip, and then just have at it. <laughs> This is the simplest air sprayer I've ever used. Just fill up the provided jugs, screw on the lid, screw the jug onto the sprayer, squeeze the jug bag until there's no more air, and then plug it in and get to spraying. The strategy here is to spray at an upward angle and then a downward angle so I hit each side of the wood slats. When squeezing the trigger, you never want to hold the gun still or it will leave a splatter of paint. Always keep the gun moving at all times. Now imagine for a second, if I had hand painted this, I would need to hand paint each edge of these boards and all the corners, and then come back with a hand roller for the wall and face of the slats, then do all that again with a second coat. There's just no way. Now that I'm ripping off this tape here, you can see just how crisp and clean my lines are. For the most part, I don't show you my flaws, but there are a couple spots I'll need to come back and touch up. I need to move my sconces over a little because my fireplace border covers the old hole, so I'll just cut out the new light box spot. And once that's cut, I'm going to use a piece of 1x3 as a new back support since there's no stud behind my new hole. My new sconce will cover these screws so I don't need to worry about applying compound or spackle over those screws. With the power off, I'll take off the wire connector so I can slip these wires through my round light box. Then I'll screw on the light box using the old mounting screws that were already used on this box. 
I'll then shove most of the wires back behind the wall because I only need enough to cover the new sconce. I'll also tie the grounded to the green screw on the plate here, which I believe is so the whole metal light fixture becomes grounded and won't shock you if there was a short in the wire and you touch the light. Don't quote me, but that's what I believe is the reason why you wrap it around the screw. Remember to connect black to black, white to white, and ground to ground, of course. I didn't plan very well for this, but this sconce is secured from the sides, but I have a slat on the right side. So what I'll do is stick the screw in from the inside and just use it as a hinge to hold the sconce on that side. Once I screw the other side of the sconce in tightly, it should be snug and good to go. This turned out absolutely incredible, guys. This was a completely original idea that my wife came up with. And I think I executed it pretty well. Just for some creative thought here, I thought about routing out the sides of these trim pieces on each end and just the under corner and putting an LED strip there that would shine light inwards towards each other. But I think that might have been a little too modern, although we still went with pretty modern sconces there anyway. But I do have a question for you guys. Can you even point LED strip lights directly towards a wall that is going to be almost brushing against it or will it get too hot, leave burn marks, something like that? Drop a comment down below and let me know because I have other ideas for that later on. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button down below so other people can see it and check it out. Also subscribe and I'll see you on next week's video.